I'm back for another swing at the Freedom From Religion Foundation. When you come after the Judeo-Christian founding of this great nation, you're going to hear from me. It's coming up next on One Nation. Hello America, I'm Dr. Jake Jacobs. Last week we started talking about Freedom From Religion Foundation focusing on their deception about what some of our presidents said in relationship to the so-called separation of church and state. We talked about Harry S. Truman, John F. Kennedy, and Ronald Reagan. President Reagan in the 97th Congress, both Democrats and Republicans, declared 1983 to be the year of the Bible. I love this line from this official government proclamation. Quote, the Bible and its teachings help form the basis for the Founding Fathers' abiding belief in the inalienable rights of the individual, rights which found implicitly in the Bible's teaching of the inherent worth and dignity of each individual. This same sense of man's pattern, the convictions of those who framed the English system of law inherited by our own nation, as well as the ideals set forth in the Declaration of Independence and Constitution. Now, organizations like the ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union, founded in 1920 by Roger Baldwin, an admirer of Karl Marx and Joseph Stalin, and the Freedom From Religion Foundation, they despise such official government proclamations as they fly in the face of their desire to eradicate the facts of the Judeo-Christian heritage in our republic's founding. These lefty secular organizations, they base their argument on a phrase not found in our Constitution, but from a letter President Thomas Jefferson wrote to the Danbury Baptists in 1802. Jefferson's letter was a response over their concern that there might be an establishment of an official U.S. federal government church, as there was in England. President Jefferson tried to calm their concerns by writing, Quote, I contemplate with sovereign reverence that act of the whole American people which declared that their legislator should make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, thus building a wall of separation between church and state. To Jefferson, who wasn't at the Constitutional Convention, or James Madison, who was, the First Amendment was created to prevent the federal government from interfering with the freedom to worship or not to worship as one sees fit, and to ensure that there would be no official United States state church or denomination mandated by the federal government. However, this concept of a wall of separation between church and state did not mean that the federal or state governments could not have a relationship with God in its official expressions as our founders at the Constitutional Convention passionately believed that our life and our liberties derived, to quote Thomas Jefferson in the Declaration of Independence, from our Creator, the Supreme Judge of the World. Now it's interesting to note that at the end of President Jefferson's letter to the Danbury Baptist, he writes, quote, I reciprocate your kind prayers for the protection and blessings of the common Father and Creator of man. Now here is our public president advocating prayer and invoking God to our citizens, illustrating Jefferson's understanding that the government could have an articulated and official expression of God and government within the wall of separation of church and state. To illustrate how far off the Freedom From Religion Foundation is, listen to the last paragraph of Pe President Thomas Jefferson's 1805 Second Inaugural Address. Quote, I shall need to the favor of that being in whose hands we are, who led our forefathers as Israel of old from their native land and planted them in a country flowing with all the necessaries and comforts of life, who have covered our infancy with his providence and our riper years with his wisdom and power, and to whose goodness I ask you to join with me in supplication that he will so enlighten the minds of our servants, guide their counsel, and prosper their marriage measures that whatsoever they do shall result in your good and shall secure to you the peace, friendship, and approbation of all nations. Now notice this. The, notice what the president was doing in his official 1805 federal government inaugural address. He was asking for help from God and not just any God. It was the God of Israel. 
the God of the scriptures, and he was asking American citizens to pray for him and that government would guide government servants. Excuse me, that God would guide government servants. God and the government were not totally separated by our founders and presidents. Now, the Freedom from Religion Foundation also likes to claim that our Constitution is godless and purely secular. History proves otherwise. At the Constitutional Convention in 1787, during one of the most contentious debates as tempers were flaring over representation between big states and small states, the theist Benjamin Franklin intervened and he stood up and he declared, God governs in the affairs of men, and if a sparrow cannot fall to the ground without his notice, neither can a kingdom rise without his aid. Notice how Franklin quotes from the New Testament Gospels. He then went on calling for the founders to pray. By the end of September 1789, our first Congress finished a draft of the Twelve Amendments to the Constitution. They were delivered to President Washington with a request to submit them to the states for ratification. Congress also asked the president to do something else. A special committee was formed from both the U.S. House and Senate, and they asked President Washington to issue a proclamation declaring a national day of prayer and thanksgiving. Our very first Congress and our very first president, knowing full well the meaning of the First Amendment, they issued a Thanksgiving proclamation designating November 26th of that year as a national day of thanksgiving <clears throat> to recognize the role of Almighty God in creating the United States of America and our new federal constitution. Listen to those very Christian words of our first Congress and President after the First Amendment was sent to the states to be ratified. Listen closely to these wonderful Christian words. Whereas it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey His will, to be grateful for His benefits, and to humbly implore His protection and favor. And whereas both houses of Congress has by their joint committee requested me to recommend to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayer to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts the many signal favors of Almighty God, especially by affording them an opportunity peaceably to establish a form of government for their safety and happiness." End quote. Historical context and empirical evidence always destroys the revisionist history of the left. The historical facts don't care about their atheistic feelings or their agenda. Now, I believe that the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, William Rehnquist, sums up the Freedom from Religious Foundation's bogus argument when in his 1985 dissenting position in Wallace v. Jaffrey, he declared that the wall of separation between church and state, quote, is a metaphor based on bad history, a metaphor which has proven useless as a guide to judging. It should be frankly and explicitly abandoned. I couldn't agree more. It is very bad history and horrible law. Sadly, the Freedom from Religion Foundation, the ACLU, and left-wing academics in their attempt to advance their atheistic agenda have conveniently ignored, denied, or perverted the historical context and facts surrounding the origin of our great nation as they rewrite America's history, hoping to fool millions of American citizens into believing that Christianity played no or little role in the creation of our great republic under God. My fellow Americans, this Christmas season, I want to thank Almighty God for providing schools like Freedom Project Academy that teach our history as it really was and not as the left distorts it to be. This is Jake Jacobs, and I wish God's blessings upon you. And until next week, always remember, the truth shall set you free. If you thought that was cool, check out more videos on freedomproject.com. You'll enjoy them.